Good afternoon, folks, or whatever it may be, wherever and whenever you are watching this video. Today, for your viewing pleasure, uh, we are going to be talking about uh, the cellular structures of plants. And uh, we will be looking at a type of algae, so really a very primitive relative of uh, land plants, specifically a green algae, that way it's very closely related. Anyways, and I've chosen this particular algae to look at because it uh, is going to demonstrate, um, first of all, cells in a filament, so they're only one layer thick. We don't have a bunch of cells stacked on top of each other like we would have to contend with if I took a blade of grass from the yard. It also has a very nice um, visually attractive chloroplast, which you're about to see. This particular algae is called Spirogyra. It gets, it gets its name from the spiral-shaped chloroplasts that line the inside of the cell. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you. Yeah, that's a little bit bright. We're gonna go ahead and might have to change the, there we go. See something probably an ostracod just cruised by. Let me adjust our colors. That way we look a little bit more normal. So let's go ahead and go down to a higher magnification for this one. Let's center it up again. So again, I'd still like to get a little bit better view of this. So let's go up one more level of magnification, all the way up to 400x total magnification. All right. So let me up the resolution of our live feed. So you can see it wiggle just a little bit every time I bump the microscope. And what we're seeing here is a filament of this algae. It's also called water silk because if you ever find a bundle of it and rub it in between your fingers, you'll notice that it feels exceptionally smooth, just like silk. And this is one of the first ways you can distinguish green algae like this because some of them will have branches on these filaments. And then when you pick those up, they might feel like steel wool or other, um, household items that you might be more familiar with. On this cell, what we are looking to find is, so let me pick out this one, mostly just because we can fit the entire cell within our field of view. So what we're looking at is basically a cylinder. So this is not a rectangle like a shoebox. You're looking at um, a bunch of round segments connected to each other end by end. That's why if I focus a little bit more, you can see those edges come into focus a little bit better. All right. And so these green things with the funny little edges that are very lopsided, your eyes are not deceiving you, you're not mistaken. Those are in fact chloroplasts, the little dots where they appear a little bit different are just areas on the inside, or instead of it being squished up against the wall, it has some structure, so it has to have a little bubble there. And what you're seeing is that is wrapped around the outside of the cell. That's of course because the sunlight, once it starts hitting stuff, is gonna start to decrease in strength. So you want your chloroplast as close to the outside of your body as possible when you're an algae like this. So, while this is a very primitive relative of, pl of plants, it is going to have all the same things that we normally discuss for this group of cells. So when we look at this, I've focused, uh, my plane of focus is right in the middle of this cylinder of cells. So you see the chloroplast in focus on the edge, the out of focus chloroplast that are above and below the plane of focus here in the middle. And we also see that there are some breaks like right here and right here. And what you're seeing there is the cell walls. And those cell walls are made of the exact same things as land plants. That's because land plants evolved from this, well, 
a very similar type of grain algae to our spirogyra here. So just like in our onion cell, sorry, I know this, I keep bumping the table and it keeps making the water in my slide move around a little bit. So the features that we we're looking for for our spirogyra are going to be very similar to what we, we were looking for in our plant cell, in our onion cell, sorry. So we have cell walls around the outside. They're very visible where they end. Or if I focus right on down the middle of this cell, you can kind of make them out a little bit better. And this edge. This is our cell wall. Right on the inside of it is, of course, a cell membrane. Remember, all organisms are going to have cell membranes. The other key feature that all cells are going to display is cytoplasm. So when we look at this cell, what, do we, what portion of it are we looking at that we can say is cytoplasm? Well, the chloroplasts take up a lot of space, just like they would normally in the elodia, but you see that kind of uh, blank space, that empty space that you see in between the chloroplasts, that is of course the cytoplasm. And that's just uh, the medium, the stuff that everything else in the cell is floating in. So just like the room that you're in isn't full of empty space, it's full of air, the empty space in a cell is actually cytoplasm. So whenever you see just a bunch of empty space in your cell, know that that is cytoplasm. So if we've got an arrow pointed right at that empty space, that's what we're asking for. If we've got an arrow pointed at one of these chloroplasts, know that we're asking about, there we go. Should have taken that a moment ago. Now that uh, I've got a picture and it's not moving, we are pointing at one of these chloroplasts. Make sure you're able to tell us that you were looking at a chloroplast. And also, in addition to that, make sure you understand that, you know, the chloroplast, so it produces chlorophyll, which is responsible for the plant being green. But that is not the main purpose. The purpose of a car is not to uh, make CO2, okay? purpose of a car is to get you from A to B, making CO2 as a byproduct. The plant doesn't care what color it is. The plant could be orange, purple, yellow. In fact, there have been some studies that suggest if uh, chlorophyll reflected uh, a wavelength of light other than green, it might actually be more, benef more efficient at harvesting light energy. Anyways, green light is a waste product. It's the light that the uh, plant can't use, and so it's just reflecting it, getting rid of it. Okay, so the purpose of the chloroplast is not to make the plant green. The plant doesn't care what color it is. It doesn't matter whether it, or not it's green. Plants don't have to be green to live. Okay, what they have to do in order to live, though, is convert sunlight energy into chemical energy in the form of carbohydrates like sugars glucose, sucrose, that sort of good stuff. Okay, so when you make a drawing of this, or if you're wondering what you need to know for this cell, you need to know that it has a cell wall. You can see the end, the little caps of this cell here and here. You know, it would also be all around these sides. Remember, this is a cylinder that we're looking at. I also want you to, you need to know that these are chloroplasts, these green structures, pretty straightforward. You know, so if it's green, it's because it's making chlorophyll. And the stuff that does that is gonna be our chloroplasts, which belong to plants, okay? So anytime you see something with chloroplast, you know that it's at least closely related to a plant if it isn't a plant. In fact, um, yeah, uh, organisms that can conduct photosynthesis uh, are pretty limited in range. Anyways, 
Point of the matter being, so we presented you with a couple of different uh, types of cells, our animal cell, our onion uh, root cell, our uh, plant vegetative cell. Anyways, and so for this one, the key difference that would allow you to distinguish this from bacteria are these chloroplasts. Because we didn't stain this, the nucleus didn't appear. That isn't because an, a nucleus isn't there. There is 100% a nucleus in this cell, and that is because chloroplasts are membrane-bound organelles, which are a more advanced feature that are only found in eukaryotic organisms. They evolved after the evolution of nuclei. And that means that anything that has a chloroplast or a mitochondria is also going to have a nucleus. And anything that has a chloroplast or a mitochondria is also going to be a eukaryote. All right. If you have any remaining questions, please do not hesitate to send an email to your designated lab instructor. You all have a wonderful day.